why did you get interested and involved in art makes me smart? I was thinking about it on the way over, and I don't remember where the call came. Hmm. We just got invited to a dinner, and um, everybody in our office is involved in art in some manner. And it, um, I think we've probably been off, you know, invited many times, and it just never taken the, you know, made the point to get there. And uh, Lori said, you know, there's a way to, to sponsor a table, or you could sponsor a project. And we said, well. I come from a long line of teachers, and so the idea of sponsoring a project seemed fun. And it really probably should have ended there. But in the process, uh, Yvonne and I had had a chance meeting in <laughs> regards to this building that we used it's as true. a uh, as the subject for the class, and it um, all the stars aligned. Yeah. And and what a building it is! One of oh, your we very proud. One of your projects. Tell us about about the building. So the um, St. Thomas Aquinas and the Newman Center was the, um, a replacement for a 1961 building that had been the student center there at UNL. And it had been one that near and dear to my heart. I'd spent time there in college and then uh, had the great opportunity to come back and be part of the design team. So it was almost eight years from when we first started to dream of it to when we were uh, at the process of dedicating. And it's a great combination of new, new architecture that has a traditional look, uh, has a great collection of art within it, within the windows and the decorative painting. So it was a fun backdrop for the students to say, um, okay, here's a world that we're not used to. How would we photo document it? And so I was able to share how we had photo documented the process, teach them about what it took to build the building and to bring the artists together. And then they took off. It was tough to slow them down after that. And what a great, uh, what a great building when you're focusing on when the theme is sense of place. True. And that was all her idea. <laughs> <laughs> How did that theme fit? How did you interpret that theme? Well, uh, the first day I met the students, I asked them how many go to church, mm -hmm. and that was that wasn't as big a number as I expected. And then we asked how many of you have been in a church, and there were three or four that had never been in a church. So the idea of sense of place, of a place they'd never been, yeah. I mean, that was fascinating to see where it would take them, how they would react to it, you know, yeah. would they like it, would that be too too different for them? And they, they as always, did much better than us adults ever would <laughs> That's that right. kind of setting. They were That's right. great fun to watch. Now, the application or the nomination form talks a lot about what you gave to the students. What did you get from the students by participating in this experience? Well, much more than I gave. Um, I met a young man that I'd love to be friends with forever, and when I asked him where he'd come from, was, he gave me the name of the refugee camp. Yeah. And that, you know, I still, I, I went home and I told our kids about it that night, and we see him at uh, hy V all the time, and um, they always ask, is that the young man who grew up in a refugee camp? And I was like, yeah, you know what, and you didn't. And, you know, we've been so blessed compared to yeah. all these others. So. Just each of the students we got to meet, some at you know, deeper levels than others, but um, I can't drive by Lincoln High now every day, and I do, without smiling. You know, because yeah. I, I know a small community within that gigantic yeah. community that yeah. are doing great things. Well, you're, um, you have given, beyond this project, you've given tours to a lot of other groups as well, including a lot of students. What's, mm -hmm. what's their general reaction when, they, when you give them a tour? Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, they've all been, you know, by fourth or fifth grade, they've all been to the state capitol. Mm -hmm. So they've gotten to experience great architecture, which is, and we're, you know, as far as the state, we're incredibly blessed with that, uh, that monument. So we take off from there and just start talking about, you know, how does that building make you feel when you come in? How did this one make you feel? And then contrast it with how it was built compared to how this was built. And, uh, you know, each grade's a little different, but we try to drill, you know, drill into the, the big picture and then down to the detail of, you know, so what did I like in school? How did I become an architect? What do you like in school? You know, where do you think you might land? And um, it's pretty fun to watch. Why is it important for people in the creative world like yourself to be involved with students who are interested in art? I had, my mother had a, a secretary at her school that 
um, uh, whose husband was some architect. And as fourth grader, I knew I wanted to be one. And wow. so she set up a lunch, and Lynn Vermeer um, has since passed away, but he spent a day just talking about what he liked about being an architect, and that cemented it. You know, there was no question after that. So I think it's impossible to decide your profession, you know, from a book or a magazine, or personally from a guidance counselor. But, you know, thank you, we have them. But, you know, you've got to talk to the people that are in the trenches. That's right. And so I think, um, you know, if we ho want any of our occupations to continue to flourish, it's taking it back to that early, you know, the early, youngest of the generations to say, this is what's great about it. Or this is what may need to change about it, but it's a great job. Well, let's give Yvonne a chance to talk. First of all, I want to ask you why, why you were compelled to nominate Kevin. Uh, my goodness. Uh, I was compelled to nominate Kevin because of the impact that he had on my students and what he did in the, in the classroom with my students. Uh, Kevin came to the classroom twice and shared so much of his passion and his interests in what he does. Uh, he took us to uh, to the church and then gave us a tour gave us a tour of the church. But then, more impressively, uh, for my students, is he let them explore kind of at their own pace and in their own way. Uh, Kevin has some really nice lenses and equipment that we do not have access to and was just right in there helping people with like tilt and shift and uh, just made it so welcoming and such a such a great experience for my students that what it did is it allowed them uh, to have access to things that they don't usually have access to um, and it's not I'm not just talking physical access to things um, just the graciousness and humility and approachability and enthusiasm that he brought to the classroom, students felt like uh, they were included in a way, uh, like this is something you could attain, this is something that has something to do with you. So it, it was a powerful thing for my students. I heard them talking about it and I was just very grateful for that he was uh, willing to share that much with my students because it made such a big difference for them. How yeah. important was it for the students to have the exhibit and the book produced? It raises the bar. It raises the bar enormously. Uh, it was the second year that we'd been doing a big idea and then editing it into a book, into a show. And what I have seen every year, because now this year when we do it, we have two previous books we can look at. We have not a template because it's different every year, but when you know that your work is going to be seen by a larger audience out in the community, it's different seeing your work, beautiful prints out on the table versus beautiful prints in a gallery space, totally different experience. And when you have people coming and standing and appreciating your work, it elevates it to a different level. Um, Something I said to them, and then you know, then there's the book project at the end of the semester that they edit. And I said, someday when you come here with your children or your grandchildren, uh, and you go to the media or go to the media center uh, and check out your book, you can show them. I mean, this is going to go beyond you. This is going to be, um, you know, bigger than this semester. So it changes the point of view. It makes it truly um, important. And my goal is hopefully meaningful as well. But it raises the bar. You get better work out of people, more authentic work. In yeah. what way does art make us smart? Oh, <laughs> that's great. You know, there's so many different ways to be smart. And what art does is it allows people to think about things in lots of different ways. In, um, in art classes, we do a lot of things that are visual, you know, in the visual arts and creative in that respect. But we do many things. We are, we're writing out our ideas. We're exploring ideas within images and symbols and things that are non-linguistic ways of talking or thinking about things, which is different. It can be parallel, but it's different and it can be more evocative and um, perhaps even, even deeper. I've had students combine um, music with their art, like at the end of the semester, edit things that's like a, a video with music and responses. So art makes you you literally, it literally makes you smarter because it's, you're engaging so many more parts of your brain and sometimes both at the same time. So it just allows you to express things maybe in a way that might be a little bit deeper or more intentional or different. And don't forget the math. We do math as well. No, we do, math is in there. We're, we're doing some math in there as well. That's right, a little engineering on the side this year especially. Yeah, that's right. I threw that in for you. That's I right. appreciate it. No, that's right. We'll, we'll take that shout out anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the math. Um, what made the experience so powerful for the students? I believe they felt seen. 
I believe that they felt, um, no, I, I believe that's it. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, someone that they perceived to be successful and important came into, into our classroom gave us his time, let us, gave us access to his, his equipment, his knowledge, his enthusiasm, brought in sketchbooks. How many sketchbooks? Too many. Many sketchbooks. Yeah. Many beautiful, beautiful, the private, these, I mean, not, not, you know, private observations and drawings, and gave us access to his creative process and just his, as an artist, um, as well. So the message that my students received was you're worth it and you and even the message was also you can do it was also implicit in some of the conversations so it was we were talking about architecture we we're talking about sense of place but what was happening for my students was bigger than that it was the medium was also in the message the message is pretty great but yeah the process was really powerful who is your favorite wizard may I have two you so may I have two I started the question from not who is my favorite wizard, but you know who is a great wizard. So I would say teachers are. And <laughs> uh, even more in spades after this semester with Yvonne. And here was a teacher who's relatively new to teaching, um, extremely new to teaching, and that in a matter of years to have seen her go from not being a teacher to what she's creating for these kids is truly amazing. And I, and seeing pictures in the book, you'll see she's creating photographers. It may not be their profession, but it's going to allow them to find a new way to analyze the world. You know, I was a complete nerd in school, and the camera was the thing that, that opened doors for me. You know, you'd get invited to parties that you really weren't supposed to be at, but, you know, hey, this kid's got a camera. And so, and whether it's just feeling comfortable in the corner of the room with the camera or being really engaged in, in the event, uh, photography has been a great gift for me. Yeah. And so I, had, I have two great wizard teachers um, that have impacted me, but they're all wizards. You know, from, from what they start with, and that was a pretty ragtag group that she had to begin with, and then you bring them together into this artistic, and not just individually artistic, but collectively artistic. Um, that takes special, you know, special wizard abilities. You know, you get a cape and you get a cool <laughs> letter on your chest, you know, for, for being able to do that. Mine was Mrs. Sizer, who was an uh, mm -hmm. elementary teacher at, in fourth grade to me, who uh, did a class on, you know, a project about what does an architect do? And it was like, wow, I like all those things that she just said. And my second was Keith Sawyers, a uh, professor uh, retired at UNL history professor, and he sort of opened up the rest of the world beyond Nebraska for us. So my greatest wizards are teachers. Hmm. Great answer.